What is going on ladies and gentlemen? This is Kevin here coming at you from the crazy iPod reviewer YouTube channel and in this video we'll be taking a look at the new $50 Amazon Fire 7 inch tablet. So this device was announced just a few weeks ago and I'm really excited to finally have my hands on it. You may have seen some of the extensive coverage that I've already done on this device on my channel which includes an unboxing where I go over everything included in the packaging, a camera test showing off the video quality and photo quality, gaming tests, and a special Minecraft Pocket Edition test. I also just put out yesterday a speed test comparison between this and its bigger brother, the HD8. I will also be including snippets of those videos within this review, however I do recommend watching those individual videos after this review video if you're interested in some more in-depth coverage. Now with all the explaining out of the way, let's jump into the review. Okay, so this device runs Amazon's Fire OS, which is a forked version of Google's Android operating system. This means that Amazon has made some extensive changes to the OS. Sure, there are certain tidbits around the operating system that are recognizable, but for the most part, it doesn't have a whole lot in common with stock Android, at least from the user experience perspective. Even if you've been using Android for quite some time on Samsung and HTC and Motorola devices or any other devices, you may not be too familiar with this special Fire OS. Fortunately though, it is very user friendly, so getting that learning curve ahead of you isn't too difficult. Due to it running a special version of Android, this device is incompatible with the Google Play Store, so you will have to download all of your apps from the Amazon App Store. This is a bit unfortunate too, if you have a lot of money invested in the Play Store, as you will need to rebuy all of your paid applications if you want to run them on this device. That could be a deal breaker for some. Another thing that is unique to the Fire OS are Amazon special offers. Basically, Amazon runs ads on the lock screen, so you will be seeing those uh, every couple of times, not every time when you unlock your tablet. Some people may be annoyed by these advertisements, but I personally like them because I get to learn about all the new gadgets and products and services that I may have otherwise not been aware of. But however, if you really don't like the special offers, you can get rid of them by paying $15. The screen resolution on the Amazon Fire 7 inch is a bit poor at 1024 by 600 pixels. However, Amazon gave this tablet a really nice IPS display. The rich colors and decent viewing angles do a nice job making up for the average screen resolution. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised by the display quality. The device runs an unnamed 1.3 GHz quad-core processor with a single gigabyte of RAM. I noticed that even with the low amount of RAM, the operating system has been decently optimized to run smoothly. The low amount of RAM really only stands out when you're trying to do demanding tasks such as playing hardcore, high-intensity games. However, for simple tasks such as reading books, browsing the web, or even watching movies, you're not going to really notice the low amount of RAM, and your user experience will be positive. The device contains 8GB of internal storage, which isn't a whole lot. However, the tablet comes with a microSD card slot, which can fit up to a 128GB microSD card. So, once that SD card is installed, you can put pretty much anything on it, including movies, pictures, games, and applications. This really frees up the space on the internal storage, as after having the initial operating system installed on there, you really only get 5 gigabytes of free space. Overall, the hardware is really impressive considering its low $50 price tag. Taking a look at the top, we have the power button, the micro USB port for charging and data transfer, the microphone, the volume rocker, and the 3.5mm headphone jack. One thing's for sure, this is a big difference compared to the original Kindle Fire, as that device didn't even have a volume rocker. This device is equipped with a 2 megapixel camera on the back, which really is pretty horrible. The front camera is VGA, and I'm pretty sure that the potato I had for dinner last night could have taken better video quality than this front camera. Too bad I already ate that potato, so I'm stuck with this camera. But anyway, don't buy this device solely for the sake of using the camera. I have a whole separate video linked down below in the description that includes a full analysis of the camera, including video and photo samples in normal light and low light. 
I will say, the only positive out of this is that the microphone is pretty decent, so if you're really only worried about recording your voice, you're in good luck. The tablet includes Wi-Fi of course, but also it surprisingly includes Bluetooth, and that's extremely rare to find on a tablet that's this cheap. Amazon claims that the battery will last for around 7 hours of usage, and I'm pretty sure that's accurate if you're doing simple tasks like reading books and browsing the web. However, if you're playing a lot of games, do not expect to get the 7 hours that's advertised. So this is a bit unsurprising, but worth noting. This device only has a 90 day warranty from Amazon, which is pretty short. So if you run into any errors outside or issues outside of the 90 days, Amazon is not liable. Honestly though, it doesn't give me a whole lot of room to complain with that cheap price tag. So in conclusion, I think there's a lot to like about this tablet. Overall, it's generally just good at most things. It's not great at anything specific, but it's not absolutely horrible at anything. You're able to watch your movies, you're able to use most apps, you're able to play most games, you're able to go on the web, you're able to update social media, you're able to do all that stuff. Maybe not quite as quickly as with a more expensive device, but definitely if you're looking to get your first tablet, if you're not really sure if a tablet is something that you're going to use very often but you want to give it a try, I feel like this is a great first step to take. So like I mentioned before, if you want to see more in-depth videos and coverage on the photo quality, the video quality, the gaming performance, a comparison between its bigger brother, the HD8, take a look at the video description as I have videos covering all of those various topics, so that kind of augments the review experience that you just watched. So if you're ready to pick this up now, I do have a link in the video description where you can go buy it off of Amazon, of course. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave those in the comments section, and if it's a really, really advanced question, and you want to send me an email, feel free to do that as well at my email address, which is crazyipodreviewer at aol.com. I would also appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up to show your support. And finally, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you do not miss out on any of my future videos. So once again, thank you very much for watching everyone, and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great day. Bye.